as always i appreciate you being here anyone that's watching thank you very much uh, i do clip the uh, reading portion of the articles and I post them on TikTok so again just follow me there I am trying to grow a community uh, on TikTok that ends up migrating to YouTube so that's the, the name of the game and it's exactly what I'm going to do uh, let's read really quickly about the Gilgo Beach murders and this is an article that was published an hour ago Okay, this is from abc7ny.com, um, reads, Gilgo Beach Murders, former escort recounts 2015 date with suspect Rex uh, Heuerman, no, Heuerman, sorry, uh, written by Eyewitness News, uh, published, like I said, about an hour ago, it was today, Wednesday, July 19th, it reads, uh, Massapequa Park, Long Island, a former escort who says she was solicited online by Gilgo Beach murder suspect Rex Hewerman is speaking out about a date they shared in 2015. Nikki Brass said she ended the date early when he gave her a bad feeling during their time together. I had a really, really bad feeling, like my gut was telling me to get away from him, she said. At dinner, she said he asked, asked her if she had heard about the Gilgo Beach murders and she said something just seemed off. When he talked about it, he would like uh, he would like speak in a day and hypothetical, but he had this like smile on his face that made me really uneasy, Brass said. And like he had this like glossed over look in his eye. Hmm. Hewerman is charged with first degree murder in the deaths of Melissa Bartholomew, Megan Waterman, and Amber Costello, and leaving their remains along a remote stretch of Beach Highway. He is also considered the prime suspect in the death of Maureen. Brainerd Barnes. So, a picture of the uh, women right here. To the left, I mean, obviously has the name on it, but uh, we honor victims here. So, Melissa Bartholomew, right there to the left. Megan Waterman, Amberlynn Costello, and right here we have Maureen Brainerd Barnes. Lives taken too soon. Very tragic. Until his arrest last week. Prosecutor says, prosecutors say Hewerman was living in a was living a double life, using burner phones and anonymous email accounts to arrange sex and search for child pornography while raising a daughter and stepson and commuting into New York City for work. On Wednesday, Hewerman's wife filed for divorce in Suffolk County Supreme Court. The docket states that the divorce will be uncontested. As for the case, officials on Wednesday said the investigation into Hewerman includes interviews with incarcerated sex workers. Investigators have, always, sorry, investigators have been talking to the sex workers about possible interactions with the suspect as authorities work to develop a more complete picture of his movements and methods. Two sex workers currently in Suffolk County Jail had prior contacts with Hewerman and have audio recordings of him, according to the Sheriff's Office. The two interacted with him through various social media platforms. He had reached out to them for sex, Suffolk County Sheriff Aaron Tolan said they had took the calls, but unfortunately, but fortunately, they did not meet with him. It says, I know, I know last year, I remember the boy in the box? I didn't see was named. I hope this brings us closer to solving cold cases. Yeah, uh, interesting. Um, I actually talked about the the uh, boy in the box probably like two weeks ago. It was really interesting. I had never heard about that before, uh, but the fact that they were actually able to like not only like a first name they were able to like identify like his whole government name and that's that's uh it's awesome because it gives closure especially to something that happened such a long time ago um, i i i like to think sometimes that we don't uh, personally i i don't have kids so i i wouldn't know what that would feel but I could sympathize with anyone that has gone through that uh, situation and I can only imagine years going by time passing and you just never have that closure there's no answer to it so you're just like rummaging in that pain and memory 
over and over and over again. That sucks. There's no way to live. I mean, not only is it, you know, like bad enough that the situation happened and, you know, a person lost their, their son, you know, family lost a family member. Uh, it's everything that comes afterwards. It's, it's insane. I saw an interesting uh, content creator that was explaining that um, she she had a, a misfortune happen to her and uh, her sister was abducted when they were younger and she's never um, uh, they've never found her again and she was just like explaining everything that comes with it and you know that same thing that I just mentioned is the fact that because she's never had an answer to what happened to her sister there's just so many Like different roads you can go down when it comes to like what, what you think happened and yeah she she says it she's like she at one point was considering you know ending her own life because she's just going to deal with it anymore I mean luckily that didn't happen and she made the video so it's like the whole thing but it sucks luckily we know who he is and at least they could be able to, you know, give closure to the family on that end. Pretty cool. Thanks for mentioning that, Heart of Shiva. Uh, okay, so. It says, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I'll read the last sentence I read beforehand. So, uh, investigators are also talking to other sex workers in Suffolk County Jail, seeking anyone else who interacted with Hewerman in the past. That could expand to jails in neighboring counties and beyond. Once Hewerman was identified as a suspect in the Gilgo Beach deaths, the Suffolk County Sheriff's Office shared his distinctive physical description with inmate, inmates they knew were involved in the sex trafficking. They could not share a photo of him at that time due to the sensitivity of the investigation. They also went through Hewerman's phone records and realized the two sex workers serving time in the jail had previously been contacted by him. They were interviewed and provided the audio recordings. After Hewerman was arrested, members of the jail's human trafficking unit were then cleared to show his photo to current inmates to see if any of them had contact with him. They, also, they are also reaching out to sex trafficking victims no longer in custody. Uh, two of Hewerman's Chevy avalanches are also being examined for evidence. The first, a newer black avalanche, was towed from his Massapequa Park property Friday. The second, an older green avalanche, was recovered on this property in South Carolina and towed by a New York State Police flatbed to New York, where it arrived at the Suffolk County Crime Lab at 4 a.m. Wednesday. Suffolk County Police Commissioner Rodney Harrison says Hewerman gave the green avalanche to his brother, lives in South Carolina around 2015. Harrison says Hewerman owned the vehicle at the time of the murders of three women whose bodies were dumped along Gilgo Beach. Damn. He says they are looking for anything that will help authorities connect the victims to that vehicle. Anything from hair to trophies to souvenirs to jewelry, Harrison said. Meanwhile, police carted more boxes of potential evidence to date Evidence Tuesday out of Hewerman's Long Island home. Item, uh, items pulled out of Hewerman's home in Massapequa Park in recent days have included more than 200 firearms. Wow. Holy shit. A large doll in a glass case. A large portrait of a woman with a bruised face and a filing cabinet. That is an extremely weird combination of things to have. Insane. Uh... That's a lot of firearms. I just want to put that out there. I mean, you only have two hands. So, 200 firearms. I mean, unless you're doing like a blade kind of situation. All right, but hey, you know, that's crazy. Investigators, some dressed in crime lab t-shirts and protective suits. I wonder why they wrote... Uh, crime lab in quotation marks I mean is it a lie did it not say crime lab are, are they not investigators but okay so 
Investigators from dressed in crime lab t-shirts and protective suits were seen Tuesday carting away a desktop computer, a large picture frame, a mirror, and many other household items. Beyond Long Island, the search for forensic and physical evidence in connection uh, to Hewerman has expanded to at least two other states. In addition to the Chevrolet Avalanche recovered from the suspect's property in South Carolina, authorities in Nevada are also investigating a connection between the accused Long Island serial killer and Las Vegas. Cops are trying to determine whether they should be searching any locations in Vegas and what those sites might be. Authorities also said they are looking at possible ties to Atlantic City, where past investigations involving sex workers have led. Investigators were also checking to see if Hewerman's DNA obtained from pizza crust he disposed of and linked to genetic material found on a Gilgo Beach victim's remains connected him to other unsolved cases in New York. Um, that's how they found the Golden State Killer. He was eating at a restaurant and uh, he threw away a napkin and investigators zoom in and they grabbed that napkin because he was already a prime sus suspect. That's when they were uh, following him around. That's uh, at the same time they reported that he would act like he was sick and whatnot, but he was actually uh, very healthy and for his age, and he was uh, riding around in his Harley and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, again, um, technology has advanced to the point where we're able to extract genetic material from any random thing like that. It's CSI right in front of our eyes. Oh wow, I didn't know that that's how he was caught, yeah. I mean, they did a, a it, it was official when he did a 23andMe and they linked him to someone else. But no, no, he didn't do it. When they did the, when they uh, ran the napkin and whatnot, they, they put that information into a 23andMe and that's how it linked with someone and that's how they were able to determine that that was the, the person that they were looking for 100% and everything else is like history. It's pretty interesting. That's an extremely long case. Uh, there's a really great documentary. I think it's on HBO or, or Hulu, either or, about the Golden State Killer and very interesting. It spans decades because... Yeah, it happened, and not, not so much that it happened such a long time ago, but him being caught was, it's pretty recent, it was like, what, 2019, 2018? It's crazy. Uh, okay, so, uh, let's see. Okay, so, um, Hewerman has denied killing the women, according to his attorney, Michael Brown. Since his arrest, Hewerman has been on suicide watch at the Suffolk County Correctional Facility, according to a spokesperson for the Sheriff's Office. The designation, which requires high security measures and close observation, came following an evaluation by county me medical staff, according to the spokesperson, Vicky DeStefano. Toulon spoke with Hewerman inside the correctional facility. I have spoken to him once. He's very calm. All three times. He's been laying down on his bunk. Very non Descript showing no emotion, Toulon said. The charges against Hewerman were a remarkable development in one of New York's most notorious mysteries. Shannon Gilbert's disappearance in 2010 triggered the hunt that exposed the larger mystery. A 24-year-old sex worker, she van uh, vanished after leaving a client's house on foot in the seafront community of Oak Beach, disappearing into the marsh. Harrison, who, who spearheaded the creation of of an interagency task force last year to solve the Gilgo Beach killings has vowed that authorities will work tirelessly until we bring justice to all the families involved. We'll start with the video on top and then we'll make our way down. Or maybe this is the same video that's underneath. Oh well, it's three minutes on.
Let me make sure. The investigation into accused Gilgo Beach serial killer Rex Hewerman has led to yet another state. Police in Atlantic City, New Jersey, now looking into whether he may be connected to any cases related to sex workers there. Now that's in addition to police in South Carolina and Las Vegas investigating any possible ties to Hewerman. Eyewitness News reporter Stacy Sager is live in Massapequa Park. Stacy. Well, Sandra, investigators are now retracing more than a decade of this man's interactions. We know that Rex Hurman met some of his alleged victims as far back as 2010. So the question now, where will the evidence lead next? In a case that continues to stun those who live here in Massapequa Park, one neighbor who lives right next door to the alleged Gilgo killer reflecting on nearly seven days now of just about everything investigators could remove, from large backyard furniture to computers to Playboy magazines and much, much more. What's been the most significant thing you've seen them pulling out of this house? Guns, one after another. As the Suffolk County Sheriff's Office reveals total. now that the indictment against Rex Hurman is unsealed, they're questioning sex workers currently in the county jail system for any other potential connections to the alleged serial killer. We do know others have had close calls. Former escort Nikki Brass, who says Hurman solicited her approximately eight years ago. I had a really, really bad feeling. Like my gut was like telling me I needed to get away from him. Especially when he actually mentioned the Gilgo case, she says. When he talked about it, he would like speak in a they and hypothetical, but he had this like smile on his face that made me really uneasy. She ended the date early. Meanwhile, the investigation now broadened to include Herman's property, both in South Carolina and Las Vegas, Nevada, wow. and two of his Chevy avalanches with potential forensic evidence. Anything from uh, uh, hair, to uh, a trophy, souvenir, jewelry. Yeah, I mean, uh, anything that. <clears throat> depends on the state. They are, um, uh, I mean, I get surprised. Obviously, it's a, it's a really high number, but uh, yeah. I've heard of, uh, I've heard of houses. I've, I've been to houses, mostly in the South. Uh, this was in uh, Georgia. A uh, person had like, probably like 50 something guns. Yeah. I don't even know what to say. It is, I mean, triple digits, that is a, a lot. Uh, again, he only has two, two hands, so I, I wouldn't understand why that amount, but yeah, that is, it's very weird. I'm not going to lie. Hey Logan, how are you tonight? Hope you're, sorry, hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we're checking out a current case that current case that's happening. Sorry, uh, it's the Gilgo Beach murders. It is uh, it's a man that had 200 guns in his house, <laughs> but he, he uh, killed three sex workers. I think it's four total, and he threw their bodies on the beach, and that's what. Sparked the whole thing, and uh, he was caught uh, yesterday, or the day before yesterday, either or. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll continue watching this uh, newscast. It can help us connect these victims to that vehicle will be instrumental and strengthen the case. As these neighbors can't help but recall memories of Herman from the past that seem all the more disturbing now, like when he'd gaze over this fence or when he brought home a giant metal door, which he told his neighbor he needed to seal off a vault in his basement. But he told me back then, this is to protect my guns. Who gets a, you know, a, a door like that, a, a monstrous door that to protect guns? So, so you're wondering what might have been, what else might have been? God only knows. 
Yeah, and there's plenty we still don't know, but today Eyewitness News learned from the Suffolk County Sheriff that at least two sex workers currently in the Suffolk County jail system right now had prior contact with Rex Hurman through various social media platforms, and they have audio recordings of him. Hurman currently in a special unit in a solo cell in the county jail in Riverhead on suicide watch. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is an article that was published probably like an hour, The new developments an hour and continuing and a half tonight in Wait, the Gimbal Beach serial killing case, but we're also going to dive deeper into how this case on Long Island unfolded so quickly in the last year and a half after something of a big stagnation for Sweet. a decade before that. Cool. They're going to give us a great explanation. With former NYPD chief and now Suffolk County Police Commissioner Rodney Harrison, who took office and immediately made things happen last year. Here's Long Island reporter Shantae Lands. As investigators search for evidence against accused serial killer Rex Hewerman, they zero in on this green Chevy Avalanche in South Carolina. The Chevy Avalanche is uh, something that got uh, this investigation uh, going in the right direction. I sat down with Suffolk County Police Commissioner Rodney Harrison, who says Hewerman, an architect, husband and father of two, gave the green avalanche to his brother, who lives in South Carolina, around 2015. Harrison says Hewerman owned the vehicle at the time of the murders of three women whose bodies were dumped along Long Island's Gilgo Beach. So it's three. Um, there's a fourth one that's attributed to him, but it's not 100% sure that he was the one that committed the murders. But uh, the three main victims are uh, the pictures that they just so, uh, showed right there. Again, there's a fourth, which would be... Uh, sorry. Maureen right here. Uh, Maureen uh, Brainerd Barnes, but yeah, the, the video, these are the three victims that were found on the beach. Sorry, just wanted to clarify that. What are you looking for in the car? Anything. You know, uh, anything from uh, uh, hair to uh, a trophy, souvenir, jewelry, uh, anything that can help us uh, connect uh, these victims to their vehicle. Investigators towed Hewerman's current black Chevy Avalanche from his Massapequa Park home on Friday. Hundreds of guns were pulled from his house. Commissioner Harrison says tracking the 59-year-old's Google searches revealed a disturbing revelation. Searching little boys and uh, other uh, sex workers, uh, seeing that showed us that he's a troubled human being. Suffolk County Sheriff Errol Toulon spoke with Rex Hewerman inside the Suffolk County Correctional Facility. I have spoken to him once. Um, he's very calm. Uh, three, all three times he's been uh, laying down on his bunk. Um, very nondescript, showing no emotion. Sheriff Toulon says his team is now talking with two female sex workers previously jailed in Suffolk County who interacted with Hewerman as a potential client around 2017. He says both women declined to give Hewerman service. Rex Hewerman remains at the Suffolk County Correctional Facility. He pleaded not guilty to multiple counts of murder, and he's currently on suicide watch. Okay. Nope. Because that has, does not pertain to... Uh, now to the MTA. Price hikes, and unless you have... Oh. Okay, I thought I saw another video. This was part of the evidence that we just saw. Okay. I think this is the voicemail... Uh, oh, it is a voicemail. Uh, one woman still had a voicemail from the alleged serial killer. The message was obtained exclusively by Eyewitness News. Let's see what it says. Uh, we are learning more tonight about the man accused of killing and dumping the bodies of at least three women along Gilgo Beach on Long Island. Neighbors and acquaintances are sharing stories about Rex Hurman. One still had a voicemail message from the alleged serial killer. Eyewitness News reporter Anthony Carlo has that exclusive interview from Massapequa Park. Yes, investigators spent much of the day searching Hurman's home, checking to see if any mementos are trophies from his victims. It's just really unsettling knowing that something like this literally hits so close to home. Forensic investigators in and out of a home that neighbors say always looked a little out of place next to the perfectly manicured lawns in Massapequa Park. This one just you always looked at it and it looked a little creepier, weird. 
the man who lived there, now a suspected killer. It was a really hot day out, and he was outside in overalls, chopping wood in the driveway. Cassandra Wickard had spoken to Rex Hureman when he was just her neighbor. He talked to us about how he does woodworking and building furniture, and his father used to build furniture. His life as a husband, a father, and an architect seemed ordinary. Hey, this is Rex. Just like this voicemail obtained exclusively by Eyewitness News. I had a question for you. I assumed he just wanted to do some work together, um, but he always maybe a little bit uncomfortable. He also wanted to touch base. Dominique Vidal says Hureman left her that message in late February when she left a networking group for architects and designers. She says they were both in. Hureman apparently up until his arrest Thursday. She recalls some of their now chilling past conversations. And then he asked me if I knew about the Gilgo Beach murders. Um, and back then, I was like, oh, you know, he's just from that area. But now I just see it as a serial killer uh, kind of just putting it in no, somebody's no, no, no. face. Yeah, I, I think he was leading certainly a double life. Investigators say Hureman's obsessive web searches about the case, his use of burner phones and DNA extracted yeah. from pizza crust helped tie him to the murders of three women, making him a prime suspect for a fourth. He definitely bifurcated his life. Sorry, I was getting a phone call. As to you know what he did uh, behind closed doors and what the public saw. Law enforcement now with a full DNA sample can determine if any of the other Gilgo Beach murders can be connected to Hureman. He's pleading not guilty. In Massapequa Park, Anthony Carlo, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Damn. He did sound pretty creepy. I mean, he is in jail, so now I guess it's just waiting until... Uh, yeah, he is the type to brag about it. That sounds... I mean, and the weird part is that was part of like his whole, uh, like, I'm not gonna say demise because he's not dead, but you know, reason why he got caught. They linked it. It was like, why is this dude asking these questions? Uh, pretty ballsy to commit those crimes and leave them on the beach. Like that is, yeah, that that's. Uh, certified um, serial killer right there if he would not have been caught it would have been a whole lot worse like, most likely he would have just continued doing this for quite some time and there would have been a lot more victims I'm glad he's in jail I hope he gets three life sentences if, if found guilty because again he's arrested but the whole process of waiting until he's uh, arraigned, put on trial, uh, it takes a long time. So we'll, we'll, we, sorry, we probably won't have any concrete um, verdicts for him probably until like a year or two now, from now, maybe like a year and a half. And uh, I say it mostly because uh, all the other true crime cases that we've covered here there's always a gap of time between when they're arrested and uh, when the trial starts and they go to uh, court and the whole jury process and whatnot uh, it's not just one after the other um, so yeah hopefully it, it, it's a really really horrible time for him in jail while he's there for now and uh, once the trial starts hopefully he's found guilty and spends whatever life he still has imprisoned that was great Art of Shiva thank you so much for uh, suggesting the Long Island killer well I mean you mentioned the fact that he was caught this weekend that led us to reading about this car reading about the topic reading um, uh, this article and watching a video on it so I appreciate that thank you um, especially where you live too yeah well wait, you mean in California or you mean the states
Because if if it's in regards to uh, like only like guns and whatnot, uh, California is a lot stricter than a lot of other states. Uh, there are states that don't have any restrictions at all. You can just go buy a gun and that's it. Oh yeah, yeah. Like so in general, yeah. Again, it's 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 a nationwide problem. It's it's just that there are more. Uh, there are states that have more restrictions and have more procedures before you can actually purchase a gun as opposed to other states that have extremely loosened uh, laws when it comes to purchasing guns and exhibit A with this monster here not not, not him but the Gilgo Beach murder um, owning 200 guns it's crazy Thank you.